Good morning, Leah. Good morning, Allison. How are you today? I'm doing just fine. I'm here. I'm great. It was technically a short work week, but because of that, it feels like I feel very busy because I haven't been able to get anything done in the schedule right. that I planned it. So it I'm feeling a little like super short work week because Monday was a holiday, so we were off. And Tuesday, we had a snow day. And like, when was the last time you had a snow day? It Alice? never happens. It never I ever mean, happens. This is adult play. Like, it's just like that never happens. It's super exciting. So, yeah. Yeah. But it was also very necessary, I yes. think. Too, <laughs> yeah. I feel bad for the people who had to go out on Tuesday. I know. Because it was I, know. So I'm, I know. Plenty of people did. And I assumed I would be one of them. And I was, you know, looking out there, trying to figure it out. And I was really grateful that we did not have to. I really appreciate it. I think a lot, I mean, we weren't going to get delivery from another, yeah. from our other libraries. Not that that's a reason not, but just everyone was kind of uh, immobilized. Who, Hi, you know, Tara. Good morning, Tara. Yeah, but because of that short work week, I'm like. <laughs> I know. I know. The, yeah. the week fell through my fingers like grains of sand. <laughs> I know it got to be Thursday, and when I was talking about the show, because we always play it on Thursdays, it was like, it was a Thursday already. I I yeah, I know. And yesterday, I got to tell you this, yesterday more was it yesterday? I think it was yesterday. When we had snow overnight, and yesterday the roads were kind of crummy. Is that, was that yesterday? <laughs> um, so 33, and the roads were like a little bit dicey. It just wasn't great. And um, I don't like driving in those conditions. I did it. It was fine, but I don't like it. And I was sitting at, I was driving down Memorial and I heard, like, I felt my Fitbit buzz. And I was thinking to myself, I was like, well, it's not time for 250 steps. That's not when it normally, so it, when I got to LA, I looked at it and it was like, congratulations, you're in the fat burn zone because my heart was beating so fast <laughs> as I was driving myself to work. And I was like, oh. <laughs> that's very sad. <laughs> Melanie, why are you putting barcodes in the chat? <laughs> She's clearly working at the same time. Good morning, Andrea. Good morning, Andrea. I had a uh, personal conversation with Andrea earlier because she had asked me what type of, what brand of this chai tea latte I had uh, that I have now influenced. I'm now an influencer, FYI. So I want to know, Andrea, in the chat, are you drinking this chai tea latte? Please say yes, even if you're not. <laughs> of course you're an influencer, Allison. We all know. <laughs> right. It just it's the it's the donut mug that makes it look so good, I think. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Um do we want to do our introduction? Yes, do introduction, then tell us what you're reading when you do it. Um hello. Uh, I'm Leah Kerrigan. I'm the coordinator of adult services at the Fairfield County District Library. I get to do all the fun adult stuff, um, reference, uh, answer questions, do research, help people on the computers, buy adult books, which is like my favorite thing. Um, I don't know why I did it that way. I, I That's how favorite it is. Um, but, uh, but yeah, adult stuff. I'm reading. Hi, Liz. Hi, Andrea. And, but yes, yes she is. is drinking. And she's drink. drinking it with milk, which is definitely a step up for me because mine is just water because I just, I'm just not to the level of warming up the milk yet. But when I do, I'm sure it will taste even better. <laughs> Um, what I'm reading last week, I told you that I had started, um, a book Crimson Lake by Candace Fox. Um, I finished all three books in that series this week. <laughs> How long are they? Um, you know, like seven or eight hours to listen to, I think. Holy cow. Yeah. Um, I, like I read three books the entire month of January. It was just like a slow month for me. Mm -hmm. And then the last week I read three books. <laughs> just wow. I do one you I do one fits and spurts like that. Yeah. Um, so you spent an entire day, like 24 hours of the past week, you spent a whole day of that time you spent listening to that those books. Mm -hmm. I really I really enjoy the characters. Mm -hmm. Um she's got <laughs> one character in this series who um talks in rhyme just randomly like even though it annoys the people around her she will yeah. speak in rhyme um there are ducks and you know how i love ducks no. okay um, yeah but, that's right she said like grizzly murder but also goslings right I, they, they're geese not ducks although the gentleman's um 
toddler child does call them ducks and he just lets her because she can't say geese so he just lets I mean, her as a goose them. is a duck is a swan when you're a toddler so right um so um but grizzly murders multiple grizzly murders and um but yes endearing characters and yeast that pick through the hair to try to find you know bugs to eat and Okay, all right. For a second, I thought the geese were going to pick through the hair and find clues to the crime, and I thought that maybe the geese help solve crimes, and I was going to say, this might be one step too far. It, maybe. maybe. No, not. but this guy, he will have, um, like, geese parties. Like, when he's super stressed, he'll fill the bathtub up with water and let the baby geese swim in the bathtub, and he puts on Neil Diamond, and just, like, the geese, it's, it's, it's a geese party, and they... <laughs> <laughs> they just have fun. The first book in the series, Bernadette, is Crimson Lake. Um, the second one is Redemption Point, and the third one is This is the problem with reading books back to back. You forget titles. Um and the author is Candace Fox. Gone by Midnight. Um so I read, yeah, I read those three in the last week. And then I started another one. It's called Love Letters. It's mm -hmm. by, let me see who that one's by. Kate Claiborne. Kate Claiborne. Okay. And the person does um, lettering, like, you know, and she mm -hmm. talks about pins that she used and planners and designing, you know, um, basically, bullet journals, although she doesn't call them that. And yeah. it's just, it's right up my alley because you know how I am about yeah, I do. bullet journals and planners. So yes. loving that. That's she awesome. in, she's already talked about three pins that I know. So it's just like <laughs> that's great. And I can I can I can definitely back Lee up on this. She and I spent a great length of time in a pen shop once. Um we actually went there we made two separate visits there to the pen shop, I think, but she had a very knowledgeable conversation with the man who worked at the pen store about the different types of pens. She recognized different types of pens. And so she's not making this up. She she knows her she knows her pens. I actually treated myself to a uh a, a, a fountain pen this week. I was like, you know what? You've been looking at it for a year. Just get it. So I, I ordered myself a fountain pen. You should be you here on a fountain pen. It should be here this week. So oh, good for you. But I'm even uh, too. Liz mentions that my hair is getting so long. It is getting so long. Um, and pen or pin? Pen with an e. Yes. Although I also do love pins, and I have a collection of those also. I do I like pins too. I have corkboard ish in my office, and that's where I collect them all. But um, I do like pins. Pens I appreciate, but I just can't commit to needing something fancy. I, what my the, what's important to me is that it has to write smoothly, and mm -hmm. as long as it writes smoothly, like a Bic stick pen is fine. I just need it to. This is the kind. I'm gonna influence now. Prepare yourself. Uh, these these pilot ones are the ones that I prefer to use, but that's all I. I'm not. Don't get that fancy with it. Um, and back to my hair, because you know. Um, I had to actually cancel my hair appointment, so it's going to continue to get longer because of bad weather. So it's gonna, it's out of frame now, and it's gonna keep going. <laughs> well, Andrea likes pins, and she's she thought it was a pin shop. We she wanted to go there. Oh, right. She also collects pins, and Bernadette says a little calligraphy enhances your life, and I think that's so right. I wish I could actually write in calligraphy. Um, if I concentrate really hard, I can get it pretty, but it, it's never like calligraphy, calligraphy. My sister yeah. can do like calligraphy. Your sister is really impressive in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Uh, and con what's sponsored content. Oh. Pilot, is, Pilot is not sponsoring this content. Um, <laughs> let's make that clear. Um, but I do think back to pins with an eye for a second, a pin shop would be really, really, really cool. And I think pins are such a great thing to collect because they're lightweight, they're relatively inexpensive. So when it comes to like a souvenir or just like a token from somewhere, it's really cool. It's really easy and it's an easy gift to give. And um, I don't know, I think pins are great. Yes, I, I do too. And it's one of those, I would have a really hard time in a pin shop though, deciding which ones to get because I just, I love them. I love them all. Yeah. I actually, I have a board on Etsy 
where I have got like 400 pins that I want pinned. And pins? You pinned pins. It got very meta. Pins. Yes. So nice. Well, Andrea says, here's to not being the coolest sibling. Um, <laughs> having a sibling who's cooler than you. So I think I get that as well. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was never the coolest sibling. I get that. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the middle child, of course. <laughs> the coolest. I'm the forgotten one. No. Oh. Oh. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I was, it was never like that. Um, my mom is actually right now watching last week's episode of us. So she loves me. Bless her. <laughs> Morning, Judith. She gave us a wave. Well, I'm Allison Moore. I'm the technical services librarian here at Fairfield County. I am currently reading. I should have brought it over here because I don't have the author's name. It's a nonfiction book called All of the Lion Heart. And it is a true... It's not fiction. It's a true story about um, a woman who in 1910-ish um, takes this expedition to Africa because she was engaged to a man who was an African explorer and he died on one of his trips. And so she wants to go and see his grave. And it's one of those like narrative nonfiction books that feels like you're reading a novel. The notes mm -hmm. are at the back, you know, and he's taken all the dialogue is real, but he's taken it and set it in to as if you're kind of reading a more novel type version. So um, and it is written by an Ohio author. Um, cool. and, but I forget the name because the book is not next to me because I was unprepared. It's people think that we should just know authors and titles <laughs> all the time. But we see so many of them. And there are so many similar ones that it just there's not and I have so much other useless information in my brain that my brain has to retain like theme songs to shows I haven't watched in, you know, decades. I can't keep current yeah. information there always. Yeah. And Marilyn gave an awesome suggestion for a pen shop. So thank you. Oh, nice. <laughs> Great. So I just wear it for them all. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, do we have anything else to update on before we get to our trying to think if there was anything else I wanted to share with you. I don't want to think so. It was not, it was a lot happened in that we had all that snow and stuff, yes. but not a lot of interesting things. Great. Right. Lots of shoveling, sore backs, that kind of stuff, you know. Yeah. <laughs> lots of ice melt, ice melt sold out, you know, those types of things. Yes. Um, would you like to tell people about our new service? <sighs> no, I'm going to let you because it's, it's your, I want you to do it. It's your thing. Okay. Um, we are offering subscription bundles at the library. You can go to the library's website, fcdlibrary.org, and right on the front page, there's a link to subscription bundles. And what it is, is every month we will, you'll fill out a form about your likes and dislikes for your, for reading. And every month we will gather up um, a handful of books for you. And um, we will select them. It'll be a mix of new stuff, old stuff, Whatever we find that we think fits the, the parameters of what you have told us that you like. And we will go ahead and select from some books for you and put them on hold. And you'll get your notification. You'll come in and check them out. Um, or maybe from time to time, we'll throw in a little something something for you uh, to make it <laughs> to make it more fun. Um, so, yeah. I am, I'm so excited about this. If I, well, I am a library patron. But if I were only a library patron and didn't work here and see everything, um, I would absolutely be signing up for this. Um, and because I, I, there are other paid services where you can get books delivered to you every month. And I think that those are great and wonderful and awesome and fun, especially if they're being done by a local bookseller. I would advocate for that every, every time. But from the library, it's great because you get this broad selection of things that if it turns out you get to pick what you like from it. And if it turns out you didn't like it, you didn't, you didn't pay any money for it. Um, and you just, I, what excites me about it so much is getting to know things I didn't know about. Um, I would not expect to get five books that were instantly became my favorite book. I don't think that's the, the point of it. I would expect to get five books that like might be up my alley and say, oh man, I've never read her before. Or I read his last one, but I didn't realize he had a new one type of type of thing. And I'm, I'm really excited about it. Yeah. And you know, you also like with those ones that you pay for, you don't have to make shelf room on your shelves for them. Right. Return the books to the library, and you get a new bundle the next month that you get to go through. Right. And like what Allison said, they're not all going to be hits. We will, you know, 
we'll give you five books and maybe you only like one of them, but hey, you might really like that one. And if, if we're not right, if we're not pulling what you like, you know, let us know. Like, you know, I didn't like this. Maybe it was too gritty for me or, you know, maybe I do have a problem with with this kind of character or situation, but, but yeah, and we'll, we'll try again. And yeah. Yeah. And I think, um, I think that the more information you give the better and the more like, so we have this form, which we're going to go over, but I think that any information you provide in there, even if you feel like it's not, the question didn't specifically ask that. I think all of that can be helpful, including something like, I do want to be surprised. Like, you know, it's okay to pick something that isn't, just this, give me whatever, or to say, I really want this to just be like romance books. And, you know, I don't think no one's feelings are going to be hurt by anything you put in those comments. It's only, it's, you know, the more information, the better, probably. I hope. Um, is there a max online? How many can you get? You'll get, you can sign up for one bundle. Um, you can have as you can have up to 50 items checked out on your card, but we're only going to do one bundle per person per month. Um, so, um, cause you'll get it the next month too. We will pull between, I think we said for adults between like three and six books, like, because if I pull you one that's like this thick, you might not want six books that thick. You might only want three books that month, but the next month I might pull shorter books. So it's like, you know, I'll give you more. Um, so we'll, we'll kind of like vary the number of books that we give you, but somewhere between three and six um, books, depending on what we're giving you. Um, and I did go ahead and let people um, for, for the adults and teens, they're doing this for children also. And for them, they're just doing books. For adults and teens, I went ahead and I am letting people also choose um, books, audiobooks, so books on CD, play away, that kind of thing, because we have a fairly large collection of those. And um, so I went ahead and I, people can get bundles where they get audio CDs, like only audio CDs or audio mm -hmm. CDs or books. Um, but yeah. for the children's collection, and the children's collection is just much different than the adult collection. Um, audiobooks aren't as big a thing with, with, with the youth. So it's just um, books for, for the kids. Yeah, yeah, I think that that makes sense. They're just... Looks like Andrea and Liz wish they live closer. <laughs> so we, they don't, we don't mail. It's just, we're not... We just can't, but... Allison is your own personal librarian. She will email you recommendations. I'll do the best I can. So, speaking of the form, we wanted to talk about it and to maybe like fill it out or like talk through it together on here because it's the first form I've felt like this I've ever filled out before, for sure. And when I talked to Mary about it um, earlier, she said it's almost like a personality test. Not really, but you know, you you have to kind of describe, or we ask you to describe as best you can. Um, not just books that you like, but why, because that helps guide us into picking the type of thing that you like. Do you like things because they're pulse pounding? If, that, if that's the case, there's different types of books that are pulse pounding. And if they all hit that mark, you might like something different than you thought you would. Um, but it is it is a different, I've never had to answer these types of questions about, about books before. Yeah. So do we want to get started? Yeah, I say let's just, let's just get started. Yeah. Um, I'm going to skip all of the personal identification questions um, and ask, what do you read only adult books? Mm -hmm. Are you um, a YA reader or do you read both adult and YA? Yeah, and that's a good question to ask because there really is a lot of crossover. And when you really think about it, you may read more YA than you think that you do just because a lot of YA books really do cross over and become very popular with adults. However, I circled adult books only. I do not want to receive teen and zero. Um, for me, I did adult and teen books. I, mm -hmm. I do read a lot of teen books mm -hmm. as well. The only teen books I ever read are ones that I'm forced to read by somebody else. And I will say a lot of the times I enjoy them, but I just, I have enough of that. I don't need, I'm, I'm in enough book clubs. <laughs> So the next question is what format do you prefer? Um, and I circled regular print books, uh, like mass market, paperback, that's fine with me. 
um, and graphic novels. Uh, okay. I'm not I, I'm not interested in large print, and I'm not interested on for books on CD or playways because I just listen to Hoopla or Overdrive. I'm not gonna. Yeah, I'm you? the same way. I just did regular books and paperbacks. Um, if the story is only available in large print, that's fine with me. Um, mm -hmm. But I don't want that, so I didn't circle it. And yeah. um, like you, if I'm going to listen to an audio book, I want a downloadable one, not mm -hmm. a one where I have to change the discs. So. Yeah, yeah. It's, I think it's a great option, and I'm glad that we have it for sure. But you know, so the next question, I shall take issue with you because you are asking me to select my very favorite—not even my favorite book, but my very favorite book. And then I explain what makes it my favorite. So, A. You will, notice, you will notice on the form, that is not a book, an answer that you are required to answer. Um, and it is purposely not required because I can't answer it either. <laughs> I love so many books. Yeah. And, like, you know, I might... I might put down that I love Harry Potter, but I, I'm not looking for a Harry Potter read alike right now. Yeah. Like I just want to that. Um yes. so yeah, that, that one is not required. You can skip that one. Well, um, I did not skip it. I filled it out at great length, which I think is I think you're not gonna like my form a whole lot, probably. Okay. But um I tend to answer everything, but in a very wordy way. Okay. And I so I did write down. I crossed out book and I said, which you can't do on the online form, but I said, what has been your favorite reading experience? Because I really did sit down and think about it. And I decided that my favorite books, what was when I look at my bookshelf and the books that I own that I've purchased because they were, I, you know, because of the, it's because of the reading experience that I had. I remember sitting down. I remember the words on the page. I remember the book in my hand and usually they're long. I like long books. And um, so I, I decided that that's kind of what is the marker of a favorite book for me is like the reading experience of it. And okay. then, so I made two columns though. And then I said, again, I don't think you can do this online. And I said, I have cultural favorites and that's Harry Potter. And that's The Great Gatsby. I read those all the time, but I do not want a Harry Potter read alike. And you could give me that Nick book, but I don't like, what's the read? I don't need more F. Scott Fitzgerald. I've read it. So those are my cultural favorites for context. And then I wrote down five books that I enjoyed the reading experience of. So again, you're probably gonna hate this form, but okay. doing what I can. They were all long and they all had something, like I said, about that experience that was very immersive for me. So that's, where, that's what I did. We can move on to the next question. <laughs> um, what books have you read recently and really liked? And try to name a few. The more, things that you can tell us that you like because like for me um my, my tastes are very broad and if i only listed like greedy murder you might not know that i also love romance so right <laughs> in fact you might assume that you do not in fact you might assume that it's only when someone is killing someone else that uh yeah, like romance too. Relationship. i'm all over the place in my reading so it's so we ask you to name a few of the books that you've read recently and really liked. So what are your answers? Um, the um, imaginary the life of Invisible Life of Aggie LaRue. <laughs> why do I keep trying to say imaginary? Because it's not imaginary. Invisible. The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue um, by V.E. Schwab. That one, it just I felt like it was like the way it was written, it was just like lyrical like I, I i know that that's that's a stupid word to use but it just it's like, like the word that they language always was beautiful they and always I just, felt, to language. I just felt like the story was so original mm -hmm. and i mean people making deals with the devil i mean that that happens but mm -hmm. like, the way it, it, it things come together and it, just, it was beautiful and there was a bit of a love story mm -hmm. to it and a revenge story and like it just all mm -hmm. of that mixed in. It was just, it was just beautiful writing, absolutely beautiful. Yeah. And the story really sucked me in. Like mm -hmm. I just, I wanted, I wanted to figure out what was going on, what was happening, why, mm -hmm. how it was going to resolve. Like I just, I had no idea where that story was going. So mm -hmm. I really enjoyed that. Um, I really enjoyed um, the series that I just finished by. Uh, Candace Fox. The characters were so quirky. I love quirky characters mm -hmm. uh, with very interesting backstories. Mm -hmm. 
you know, it just, that to me is, you know, that, that funny element that, that gets mm -hmm. added to the story, like a character that speaks in rhyme. That's, that's fun. Um, I, I like that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so that's two of the ones that I wrote down. Yeah, yeah. I wrote down, um, and you're supposed to explain why in the following questions. So I kind of come, you know did a little bit of both, but books that I like are usually language driven. Um, that's like the primary feature of them. I read that's further down too, but like literary fiction where like the language is the main, the main force in it above, even above plot. Um, and I like books that make you think. Um, and as I said, I wanted to feel immersive and I want to be pulled into it. Um, and so books that I liked recently that fit that description um, are a Gentleman in Moscow, because that was a very, a very well-written book and um, very immersive. These Ghosts Are Family by Macy Card, which I talked about last week, um, because something I like is various shifting perspectives. And that is a book that is written where every story is written from a different person's perspective in a different place in time. It jumps around. And I like books that leave you with questions. I like books that give you just enough information to then wonder what happens. And that's an example of one of those also very well written. Educated by Tara Westover, that's a memoir. It's a shocking and compelling story, but it's not written for shock value. She is a storyteller, she's a historian and she does it really beautifully. So I liked that. Um, and then um, I also included uh, Shit Actually by Lindy West, which I had mentioned on here because it was hilarious and it made me laugh. And it was a good balance to some of those other things saying that I also enjoy for bundle purposes, um, something humorous and something like more pop culture-y, you know, it doesn't all have to be, you know, fat heavy books. <laughs> <clears throat> and then after we ask you what books you like, mm -hmm. I wanna know what books you've read that you did not enjoy. Um, mm -hmm. You want me to go? Yeah. Okay, so thankfully, or for what, I don't know, I don't read books I don't like. If I don't like them, I don't read them. <laughs> Not enough time in the book. Um, but I am in a lot of book clubs and sometimes I do um, like push through or I read enough of it to say, this is not for me. And unfortunately, a few of those books include um, Atomic City Girls, The Daring Ladies of Lowell, and The Readers of Broken Wheel Recommend. Uh, Daring Ladies of Lowell and Atomic City Girls are two books that fit in what I explained, do not give me a book like this. I do not like historical fiction that is just kind of a cover for a romance. I I, I don't. And so what I actually wrote in my, my thing was, do not give me a book where there is a costumed, like a historically costumed woman on the front and you see her from behind or slightly to the side. And the title has something to do with a woman or a girl or a wife. And that sounds very specific, but if you work in the library, if you see a lot of books, they're actually... Yeah you know what book I'm talking about. And I'm not I saying, the whole, about, yeah. yes. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with those books, but they're just, for whatever reason, out of all the genres, that is the one that I just really don't enjoy. Um, I just don't enjoy those stories. And so I feel like that very specific information is a good example. If you have something like that, it's not stupid to say it. It will yeah. mean something to the people pulling the books. If you're like, I do not want a book with a man and a woman on the cover who are like, one's up here and one's down here and you can tell they're kind of at odds, but whatever. Th that's a type of book and we won't pull it for you <laughs> if you say not to. <laughs> I, I am just like in my mind, like going through like flip, 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 all of the book covers I can think of that are a woman <laughs> in a historical dress either from the back or from the side. There's, there's so many of them. No. Um, so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's a good guidepost. It's not, And again, nothing wrong with those books. I just feel like that's a good a good guidepost. You just don't go down that way. Go down a different way. There's plenty of other books that don't. Least favorite books for Andrea are Dark Matter by Blake Crouch and The Regional Office is Under Attack by Manuel Gonzalez. I haven't read either of those. Well, um, Mary says the best <laughs> that is the best description, and I know exactly what kind of book you're talking about. You can fully judge a book by its cover. Yes, you can. <laughs> you definitely can, especially again in this like form context. I feel like those generalizations are actually really useful when you're picking a group of books for somebody. I feel like it's okay to generalize, and you're gonna you're gonna do yourself a favor if you do a little bit of that, probably. <laughs> 
uniform? Um, for me, I do not. I do not want an inspirational book. I, I you know, if there's an Amish woman on the cover, I am not going to read it. Um, so if that's just that's not my genre, mm -hmm. if in the, you know, on the title verso, yes, it, you, you, you list which version of the Bible you use for your quotes. That is not a book I'm going to enjoy. So there's like a whole range of the library there that you can just skip. When you're yeah. Um, I do not enjoy, um, inspirational. Yeah. Um, sure. And we, yeah, that's totally fine. We do have like themes that you can circle or mark on the online form about things that you try to avoid when you pick your own books. And one of the, one of them is religious themes, violence, steamy encounters, uh, mm -hmm. profanity, political themes, and those, and then we have a box where you can fill in your own. Um, and we have not read everything. We very well may give you a book that's has profanity in it because a lot of them do and there's no way for us to know but we yeah. can avoid authors who are known for such things um if encounters is on the list we can tell by a cover very easily to not give you certain things but that does not mean that there's not a steamy encounter within we've just done our very right best. and like some book imprints like we know that this imprint they specialize in steamy mm -hmm. romance yes <laughs> so like you know we can so we can just say you know what if it's a blaze book you're not gonna get it <laughs> The Blaze right, imprint right. is all about steamy romances. Right. We will Very aptly named. <laughs> yeah, so we, can, we, can, we, have, we definitely have information about that, but just it's, we can't, especially for something like profanity, that's very difficult. But we do know, again, certain genres, certain series, certain authors, that's kind of their thing, and we would certainly yes. throw that in. Yeah. So I, I couldn't really think of like very specific titles that I didn't enjoy mm -hmm. because like you, I, if I don't like it, I don't read it. I just don't finish it. And then they're like, I got no record of what book it was. Cause I only write down the titles of the books that I finish. Mm -hmm. So yes, I couldn't think of anything that. I yeah. Really and I really, I pulled, I pulled from book clubs and again, no shade to the people who pick those books. It's just, oh. it's just not for me, but that's usually my exposure to things that I'm like, <laughs> I don't want to do it, but I'm picking the next book and I have to have had the karma. And <laughs> um, yeah. So then the next thing I guess is you asked, is there something you're in the mood to read right now? Yes. And so now I think, this, that, sorry, go ahead. This is, I'm not asking like for a specific title of the book that you want, because if you want a specific book title, we can put that on hold for you in the catalog and you'll get it whenever. This is more, when I'm asking this question, I want to know, like, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, it's the middle of winter and I am stuck in a funk. Give me something that's going to make me laugh. You know, give me something light. I'm not in the mood for serious right now. I just need something that's going to make me laugh. You yes. know, that kind of thing. Right. And that's then something that can be updated. Do we have a Sorry to ask you on on air, but do we have a procedure for updating your form? Um, someone can always call in and tell us yeah. some updates. We will be contacting people a couple times a year okay. and asking them, hey, are you still wanting to do this? Do you still want to pick up your, do you still want to receive? Is it working for you? Is it working? Is there anything you'd like to change? So okay. we will give people an option to update. Because what you want to read right now when you fill out the form is probably going to be different come July or whatever. Right. Um, yeah. And I, Bernadette, I got to interrupt here because Bernadette gave a thumbs down to the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. And I will say I enjoyed that. And it is fine, Bernadette, that you did not. We are still absolutely very good friends on here. But um, but I, what did you not like about it? I'd like to hear in the comments. But it was super weird. It was a little weird. Um, and I think I enjoyed its weirdness. But I'd read a few things by that author before. So I knew to expect it to be weird. Um, there's a book called My my best friend's exorcism, I think, was the one before that, and then the one before that was called Horror Store, and it was like set in an IKEA type store that was like haunted and had like a portal to another like demonic. <laughs> I won't give the rest of it away, but where that portal led, but it was it was not great. So um, I think I knew there was going to be like some weird quirkiness, but I I and I think I, now that I've talked through it, I think I understand why you might not have, why you might not have liked it, but. <laughs> I did like that one, and I've recommended that book to people before. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the thing. Like, with these book club kits, 
or these not book club kits, these subscription Don't bundles. Don't for that. <laughs> Something else. These subscription bundles. Not everything we give you is going to be quite on point for you. Mm -hmm. You know, you might like this author, and everyone else recommends this author as like a read alike. If you like this mm -hmm. person, you love that person. Yes. You might like this author because of like his books are character driven. Mm -hmm. But someone else might like that author because they're fast paced. Like, so like, mm. like yeah. what you like about something might not be what other people like about right. that author. So you think, so your recommendations would be different. Yes. And I think that's what's so cool about filling out this form and explaining like what you liked about something because mm -hmm. someone, could, two people could list the same book and like different things about it. And I love I don't know. I just, I think that's really cool. And I think it's like such a fun challenge to then try to like piece together something. It, mm -hmm. it is a lot, it is a lot of work and it is a challenge. It is, so. it is, it is so, a lot of work. So hopefully people will understand that, you know, they won't all be, like you said, they won't all be hits. Um, and Bernadette, I did not mean to put you on the spot about that book. It's just so funny. I read that last year and I know I told several people about it and I was like, oh, it's just like, it's zany. They have this book club and then they have to kill a vampire. And, um, and I have recommended that. So it is just a fun example of, of like what one person would like about something and then what someone else would not like. Cause you do know what's going to happen in the title, but like, you know, it is, I don't know. Yeah. It's just interesting. So no need to answer. I no need, I did not mean to put you on the spot. It was just <laughs> kind of funny. Um, so our form goes on to explain the genres basically that we have to pick from in the library. So you can pick as many of those as you want, including, um, oh, she did love the gentleman, a gentleman yeah. of Moscow. So, and that book was so good. That book was entirely different from <laughs> that vampire <laughs> book. Oh, good. I'm so glad. Um, I'm glad we've ended on a, I just, I felt bad. I felt bad. I did not mean to put you on the spot there <laughs> for not liking a book I liked. Um, so you can pick from all these genres, including then nonfiction topics and the nonfiction yeah. topics are the part that we spent a lot of time, like trying to figure out like, what's the best way to narrow down the entire realm of nonfiction. And the way I, I, I finally settled on narrowing that down was by giving you very broad subject areas. And then in the next question saying, give us some more information <laughs> because, um, there's no, there's without breaking it down into the thousands of ways that the Dewey Decimal System breaks it down, um, you, you can't come up with a good list there. So I gave you broad things like do it yourself. And if you, so you could be like, you know, mm -hmm. home improvement projects. I love looking at like gardening and shed building and decks. Like, okay, yeah. I know where that section is. Um, whereas if you just say do it yourself and don't give me anything, I might give you a book on plumbing. Or let's let's know what you want. So, right. Yeah. So yeah, I think that you give us some more information in the next. Yeah. Session. Yeah, and so that's on my form for that. I have um, like uh, pop culture because I well, I have so I have many things in there, but for right now, like I. I have this other nonfiction project happening, so I would like to have like some lighter stuff. So I circled pop culture and um, we have, oh yeah, biographies and memoirs, but I, but I, I, in my notes, I said, I want like only really lighthearted things, memoirs, essays, humor, pop culture is was the type of nonfiction I was looking for. So hopefully, does that sound like enough guidance for an, yeah, someone yeah, who might yeah. be, okay, something like that? Yeah. Um, I'm... I'm really not much of a nonfiction reader, so I, I kind of I skip those. I, I don't want nonfiction right now. Um, it's it's not that I never read nonfiction. I do, but I'm very particular about nonfiction, so I don't think anyone could anticipate the things that I would like. Right. So for yeah. nonfiction, I, I, I don't I want I don't want that in a subscription bundle because right. you're probably yeah. not going to do what I like. Yeah, and what I did on mine too, as advice for anyone else who's filling them out, is I put um, under the books that I've read recently and what's your favorite book and why, um, I put a few, I included a graphic novel on what, what are my favorite books and I tried to include like different types of books to show like if you were gonna pull me a graphic novel, this is the type of thing. And I don't know that everyone, you know, has to put that much thought into it, but I, it might behoove you to uh, try to give 
a broad range of examples to get a broad range of things, unless you really do want it to be very specific. If you want this to be your romance bundle, then, you know, you don't need to tell them that you like the goldfinch by Donna Tartt, but like, it's, you know, yeah. I feel like trying to give an overview would be helpful. So I also included like Gone Girl, even though I don't read, because I, I that was a great example of the pulse pounding type of thing that I like to read, but, mm -hmm that's not the only thing I like to read. So I don't know. I, I hope that, I hope that the form is helpful to people. I hope people understand it. And if you do have any questions, um, there's a number there you can call, you can ask us, you know, what kind of information are you looking for? Or you can talk to us about what it is you, you like and yeah. we'll, we'll help you. And then there's also the section at the bottom that says, is there anything else you'd like us to know? So giving that information, giving information there. So in the end, I said that I want to get books that I might not pick otherwise. So I would love to be surprised. I don't, I'm not expecting everything to be the same thing. I would rather have a broad range of things than a narrow range of like just this thing. And then I also mentioned that um, I, authors that I had mentioned earlier that I've already read all their stuff because I don't want you, you just waste time pulling things. Oh, well, has she read this other book by David Mitchell? You know, and so I yeah. did mention that. Um, but then I said, but the other authors I have not. So if you wanted to pull something by them. Um, that and then is a I, great thing to know because people will be like, oh, this is my favorite author, but I've read all of his stuff. Right. I I wanted to, yeah. 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 And then finally, I said to please include. Um, one graphic novel because and it does. And again, it, it, it doesn't have to be a hit, but like, I would love to have one picked for me that I might not have read otherwise or might not have known about otherwise. So I think that that kind of stuff, would that be okay to include to someone Absolutely. saying please include yeah. a graphic or please include a romance um, mm -hmm. of this type or whatever, but it yeah. doesn't matter which one or. Yeah. Okay. Or, it, you know, I only want one graphic novel. I prefer yeah. the rest be. Yes. Yes. And so that's, yeah, that's what I said. I said, please include one. <laughs> one. Yeah. And that's a great thing to include. Or if you're a person who is like, you know what? I'm a slow reader. I really only want three books a month. Great. Or if you're say, I'm a very fast reader, go ahead and give me all six. I'll get mm -hmm. through them. Yeah. And I think if you're a slow reader, if you plan to only... I mean, this doesn't necessarily mean slow. You just maybe you don't even have time. But um, right, right. only plan to maybe read one in a month. I would still say get three because then you have something to like, choose from. Right. Not like I have said. Not all of them will be hits. So. <laughs> right. Right. So don't don't I feel like, like, I'm, I'm like I keep saying that, and I don't mean to say that. I'm gonna pick bad stuff for you. That's not what we're saying. It's just it's that just, everyone's tastes are different. It's an imprecise science. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so hopefully, hopefully this has been useful to anybody who who is interested in doing this and who is able, who lives in our district to, to do it, to come pick them up, unlike, unlike some of our viewers. Um, right. But please do call in if you have any questions about using the form and please use it because we're hoping that this is a great alternative to browsing and then also just something to look forward to. <laughs> yeah, because like, especially, well, especially right now when you can't come in the library, but people are busy, like spending the time browsing the shelves. Some people, some people just want to come in, get their stuff and get out. Mm -hmm. I'm one of those weird people. I... I work in a library and yet I can spend hours browsing a bookstore. <laughs> yeah. I know if that's weird, but um, some people, they just, they don't have time. They just want to be able to come in and pick up their stuff and go. So, yeah. Yeah. So hopefully we can streamline that process and maybe introduce you to some new things or. Mm -hmm. yeah. yep. uh, Brenda, I'm not sure about that last comment. I don't know what it means. I'm so sorry. Talk about yeah, it's 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 a Google form that you fill out, oh, and the information okay. is um, it's it's put into a spreadsheet in the back end, and we um, download it and then we delete it. So it it's not like living 
on the website there for people to um, get into somehow. Because once we record the information, we, we download it from that form and then delete it. Um, we will have to keep copies of it at the library so we can pull information for you the next month. Um, and we know what your likes and dislikes are. But um, that's but yeah, if, you wanna, if you have questions about that, you want to call me at the library later, we can talk. Okay. For some reason, this is because of what we were talking about, I thought security security of site was a book. Um, <laughs> and like the last one was about Gone Girl. And I was like, oh gosh, does she have another one? And it's got, so that was where my mind was. I was like, I did not know she had a new book. I got to look into that. So my mind was someplace completely different. So I'm glad one of us had a response to that. And that was a very good question. Yes. Yeah. It is one of those things like, I know like in the catalog, there's that question about like, you can keep your reading history, but when you, you do that, you get this notice like, Hey, the FBI can subpoena this information. It's like, Oh no, Leah, I think you froze. You froze in the most dramatic, you froze for me anyway, um, after talking about the FBI. I don't know who, which one of us froze though, because we never really know. We were mostly done. So if it is her and not me, I'm just gonna go ahead and end it because we're at our 45 minute mark. Um, <laughs> thank you for joining us today. Sorry to end on a weird note and we will be back next week. <laughs>